Bhagavatu Sahanao Bhunaktu Sahavirya Karavavahai Pejas Vinavadhi Tamastu Mavid Vishadahai Aum Shanti 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 Namaste. So, we've seen in India especially, but it also happens in the West, you know. People say, oh yeah, I know Brahman. I'm Brahman realized. Well, anybody can realize Brahman superficially in five minutes. Want to know how? Okay. Look inside yourself for that part that knows that it knows, that is conscious that it's conscious, that is aware of its awareness. Any intelligent person can look inside and recognize and discriminate this part of themselves from everything else. That's Brahman. That is the self. That's what we mean by Atma Vichara. To look inside and find the part of yourself that is conscious of being conscious, aware of being aware, knows that it knows. So that's it, right? <laughs> if only. That's only the beginning. I mean, it's certainly better than being in ignorance. But once you hear about Brahman and all of its wonderful qualities, and once you do the search within, the vichara, and you recognize Brahman, that's only the first step. To actually realize Brahman, you have to become Brahman. In other words, you have to act like Brahman. There's a wonderful passage in the Kena Upanishad where the guru is asking the disciple, basically, well, how is your progress? How are you doing? And the disciple says, I know Brahman. I know it well enough. And so the guru replies, well, if you think I know Brahman, then you don't know Brahman. <laughs> because why? It's stated in the Upanishads, Brahman is never the object of knowledge or work. In other words, you cannot know Brahman. Brahman is beyond the known and beyond the unknown. It's transcendental. That means it cannot be either accepted or rejected. And you cannot become Brahman because you already are Brahman. 
So what this means is that to realize Brahman, you have to basically get rid of all the junk that is covering Brahman. You have to disidentify from the body, the mind, the upadis or coverings, the vasanas or the mental habits, the sankharas or the fabrications, the identifications, the projections, the objectifications, and so on and so on and so on. Well, how do you do that? <laughs> That's what meditation is for. There's no question about becoming Brahman. You are already Brahman. But if you say, okay, I know Brahman well enough. And then you go back to your house and your car and your wife and your job <laughs> and all your other nonsense then you haven't realized Brahman. You don't know Brahman. You can't know Brahman. As Ramana Maharshi used to say, you can't see Brahman. You can't see the self. You can only be the self. Because the self is ineluctably subjective. It's never an object of knowledge. It's never an object of consciousness. It's never the result of work. So there is no striving, huh? no, no uh, attaining Brahman. It's not possible because we are already Brahman. So the purpose of sadhana, the purpose of meditation, the purpose of living the holy life, renunciation, and so on, is only to drop all the things that get in the way of our being Brahman, being the self, and knowing about Brahman in the proper way as it is revealed in the Vedic scriptures. Because the Vedic scriptures are self-manifested from Brahman, and they are Brahman talking about itself. They are not a product of human intelligence. They can't be, because, again, Brahman can never be an object of knowledge or work. So it's not possible to know Brahman and it's not possible to do something that makes you realize Brahman. You're already Brahman, but the natural knowledge about Brahman is covered by ignorance. So first you have to get rid of the ignorance. You have to get rid of the nonsense. So what is Brahman? Brahman is described in the Upanishads as the eye of the eye, the ear of the ear, the speech of speech, the knower of knowledge, and so on. By what knowledge can the knower be known? See? Brahman knows the sense of sight, and the sense of sight knows the eye, and the eye knows the objects of vision. And the same with the ear and the other senses, including the mind. Brahman knows the mind, and the mind knows the thoughts, and the intelligence, and the ego, and so on and so forth. 
So everything arises out of Brahman, out of consciousness. And everything returns to Brahman at the end. We can only know this process. We cannot know Brahman directly, but we can be Brahman and know all these things as Brahman. We can identify with Brahman and become rooted in Brahman as our identity, our real self. That is complete self-realization. So if Brahman is the knower of the known, how can Brahman be known? <laughs> it's not like there's a separate self that knows the self. There's only one self, only one Brahman. So how can Brahman know itself? But Brahman can experience itself as being itself. And it can experience knowing everything else. See, Brahman is like a mirror or a crystal. If you take a crystal or a mirror <clears throat> and put it on something red, it turns red. If you put something blue in front of the mirror, it turns blue. And consciousness is like that also. Consciousness becomes red when it sees red. It becomes blue when it sees blue and so on. That doesn't mean that consciousness is red any more than it means that the mirror is red when it's reflecting a red color. So in this way, we have to use discrimination, viveka, to <clears throat> distinguish consciousness from its contents, the subject from the object, Brahman from the mind and senses, and so on. And this means that we are no longer affected by the senses and their contents. Like Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, happiness and distress, heat and cold, winning and losing are meaningless to one who knows Brahman. Why? Because Brahman is neither hot nor cold, is neither wet nor dry, <laughs> is neither a winner nor a loser. You see? Brahman is the witness of all that. And so, if one really knows Brahman, huh, then one gives up all these sense objects. One becomes a renunciant. One lives a very simple life, only accepting the bare necessities. One becomes detached from all these qualities of material existence. One does not desire anything. One does not lament over anything, nor does he rejoice over anything. It says in Bhagavad Gita, he does not rejoice when he obtains good. He does not lament when he obtains evil. Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma, one who is in consciousness of Brahman, is satisfied, is happy in his being. Prasan Atma. He feels blissful. He feels, I got the mercy. And so this is actual self-realization. 
and it's a big piece of work. So you better start on it right now. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.